Hello YouTube, Mystery Report Newsletter and Tutor Chat subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 28, 2019. This is the Mystery Report Newsletter number four. The update report, this weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1.1 through Revelation and everywhere in between. Um, sit back. It's probably going to take about an hour to give you the update for this week. And um, looks like Crystal and I are going to be able to, to have our uh, interview this coming Friday. If not this Friday, it'll be the next Friday. That's the day that works best for us. So far, neither of us have been, at least one of us hasn't been available. So that's going to be coming real soon. Then, uh, this is a, the Podcast-O-Matic. This is sent in by John. He, he recorded the 37, 38 programs from 2012 that I did on Awakened Radio. He's uh, cut out the Project Black Star that was the start of every radio show. And he's, uh, he's listening here for us. We're going to have quite a number of those. Very, very good series. Very proud of that series. Very glad that John grabbed it all. And so it can be... Um, shared in these newsletters last week's chats right there YouTube and this week's lesson is uh, it was right after my report was done and I was uploading last week you can see Dr. Laura wrote me on the 21st and she wrote me at 1220 so when I started to make my I was doing I shut the window was putting my report together and, and sharing with you guys Dr. Laura, Laura wrote me um, with these questions so that's what we're going to focus on <clears throat> pardon me uh, for this week then we're going to i'm going to show you the uh where i defended the uh the gospel the two gospels and the four baptisms that's going to be coming up here in a bit and then uh, we'll look at some of the featured stories what's going on with the coronavirus that that is a very big story and a lot of both newsletters are going to be trying to uh keep up with what's going on that's a, that's a, a story that's changing just about daily and this could be the big fail safe elite fail safe plan um, part that one component of it that's being launched and um, we're wise to keep an eye on that all the time moving through this um, what's left of the winter and moving through the spring because we could see other things that are happening that tell us that uh, the time that the black star is almost here. The three witnesses are testifying to what? See, it dawned on me in last week's report is that Brian's been asking me questions and Trevor's been asking me questions. They're more advanced. And so I was going through the report last week then, and I was even have to explain myself that some of this stuff is meat. It's real meaty, and it's going to, for the babes aren't going to be able to cover it. So whenever Dr. Delora wrote me this, then she says, I want to ask you a basic question. Then as I was reading her reply that I'm thinking this will be help us to kind of be a balance. To This will be more on the milk side. So those that felt like they were left behind a little bit and um, couldn't quite understand what was being shared last week with the mystery of Adam. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, from the previous for, um, updates from the previous reports, then this one is going to be from the other end of the spectrum and for more for beginners. So um, she writes, and she, uh, first I'm going to thank you for your support. I thank all you guys for your support. appreciate it very, very much. Then on Tuesday the 21st, Dr. Laura wrote me and she said, and by the way, she's a, uh, a Black Star, a uh, survival group subscriber. She's been sub supporting my research for a long time. She says, hey, Terrell, just wanted to let you know that I inadvertently scheduled a patient during the time when you're having your, your spirit meeting. That's every Tuesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And so she was having, um, she's in the mountain time zone. So here's the map right there. And so she's going to be participating whenever she can. So that doctors are real busy. From 5 to 7 if you're out in uh, mountain time. Not about where she's at. It says, I do have a basic question about the material that maybe I can figure out if I read the newsletter. 
Are you recording the meetings? Yes. You know, as long as we have the, this, the tutor chat program just started, so it's kind of new. There's not, now we're up to 25 subscribers, and it's growing. And there's going to be more activity as we go further. It's like five or six of us, maybe seven of us that show up on Tuesday nights. I know John said he can't be there tonight. And um, I'm going to open up the room just before 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If nobody shows up and by a quarter after, then I'm going to consider that you guys are taking it easy on me. And I'm going to go rest somewhere. Otherwise, then I kind of wait for the room to come in and you guys to ask questions. And then whenever it's a, it seems like this is a good point to start, then I turn on the recorder and then re record the chat so that at some point, maybe they'll all that'll all be private, just share the newsletter for right now. It's just all open air. Share with everybody. Give you guys access to as much information as possible. So then um, I said, yes, this is our third meeting. And then I um, sent her the Dropbox folder link, which she already has in a notification email. I said, this is your 2020 Dropbox folder uh, misreport Dropbox folder link. Just cut, just click on it or cut and paste it to your web browser and download, read the latest newsletter. You guys, you don't need a Dropbox folder account. If you, Sometimes Dropbox tries to like scam you or whatever. You you go to use my link and it'll say that you that uh, sign up here. People think they need to sign up and pay 10 bucks a month or something like that. You don't have to have a Dropbox folder account. There's no integrating your account with my account. It's not advanced like that. This is set up for people that do not have a Dropbox folder account. So you just put the link in, hit the enter button, boom. A white box may pop up the first couple of times you go there. Just click the X in the upper right, and you'll be looking right at all the newsletters. I'll show you what that looks like over here. This is just what it looks like. Okay, the mystery report. You put your Dropbox folder link in, hit enter. You see it's asking me to sign in. I don't have to sign in. There's no username. There's no passwords. There's nothing. You just have the link. You put the link in, click on it. Keep that link to yourself. That's um, terrell03.com proprietary property. That's what you're paying for as a subscriber. One time a year, $25 per year. And uh, $50 per year, that gets you the tutor program and chat benefits. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So this, guess where this newsletter is about to go once I get the link fixed. Once I get that link fixed right there, then it's going to go right over here. As soon as this is done and I upload it, it's going to pop up right here. So this is the 2019, uh, five of them for the uh, for last year. They're all in the 2020 Dropbox folder. Now, by the end of the year, you're going to have 57 of these update reports, one done every week. And we're leaving a breadcrumb trail. You, um, I'm leaving a breadcrumb trail. I wanted to show you that. I want to show you that before well, I need to get the right browser up right here see on this YouTube this is the YouTube channel that's right here these are the videos that are up there and you notice that there are some that are numbered see the report 008 007 006 5432 1 whenever you, if you sub subscribe today this is where you're going to want to start I mean you can watch them all if you want uh, you know you're going to get benefit from everything but these are the ones that are numbered so that each one of these lines up with one of those um, newsletters. And you're going to start at the beginning, the two Gospels. You see where it says two Gospels? If you can barely see it, two Gospels. This is on the two churches. This is on the four baptisms, right? So this is where it begins. This is how we're going to get your, your, your doctrinal foundation established. So that when I say Gospel, instead of you going, oh yeah, the Gospel, you're not going to say that anymore. You're going to say, are you referring to the gospel of the kingdom or are you referring to the gospel of the grace of God? Because there are two different gospel messages. Only one has power today. That's our word of the cross gospel message. I'm not trying to say that there are two gospel messages going into the world right now that are saving people. That's not what I'm saying. It was happening back in Paul's day. But the bride of Christ, Peter, John, and James, the kingdom of priests, that's no longer in effect. That's been put in abeyance. The day of the Lord started with John the Baptist. Israel rejected, they committed the transgression of Romans 11.11. 11. Those who were called, that were chosen, Peter, John, and James, Cornelius, 
They were all gathered, but that kingdom church was cut off. Romans 20, verse 4, one of the most misinterpreted verses in the entire Bible, talks about Peter's kingdom church, I'm characterizing here, being cut off. It, the term they're going to use there is beheaded, but it is not. that's not what it means. People look at that as beheaded, but it's not. It's the whole church, and they're being cut off. Literally. So that this this uh, mystery time could come in. This is this mystery time is parenthetical to the day of the Lord that already started. It's just held in abeyance now. Whenever we're taken at the rapture, which is going to happen very soon, then the day of the Lord continues. The, the, the Holy Spirit drops us off. Gives us, we meet the Lord in the air. Boom, he's come back down to the earth. Elijah, and that's the question that Brian was asking me. That do, do we know Elijah's name? He's in the world right now for certain. But no, we don't know what his name is. His name could be John, like it was John the Baptist. His name could be David. His name could be Elijah, Joshua. He's had lots of names. And he has to be recognized. That's the key. But he's going to have the spirit and power of Elijah like nobody's business. He's going to tell everybody how the cow eats the cabbage. He's going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He's going to be telling them through Israel to repent and be baptized. That's how it's going to start. It's going to start the kingdom. By the end of the age, the gospel of the kingdom is going to go to the whole world. Matthew 24, verse 14. Okay, so, so we clear up confusion about when the uh, Bible study is. That's going to be tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And then she has a question that maybe I can figure out. And am I recording? Yes. So she's asking about the recordings that I just showed you right here. So that's the first one. That's the second one. The one that we're going to do tonight is going to be right here. And this gives you all the information, all the activity for the week, all the debates that I'm participating in, the topics that I'm starting on, at ChristianForums.com. Everything in one document. So you, you are able to, every Tuesday, and by 4 to 6 p.m. in the afternoon, then you can download, to go to the Dropbox folder link, you'll see that the newsletter's there, and then you just click on it, download it, and then you can read it. This one today is 74 pages. Okay, so now we're going to get into um, Dr. Laura's question. Okay, the Dropbox folder link there. You can find the radio section, last week's chat. So I posted the link right there for her and at the top of the newsletter. Those eight videos, the ones that I was just talking about, 0, 1, 2, right, are from the 2012 radio series. That's the one that John's sending in to us. And then she says that she has a question, which is a very good question. And it's easy for me, because I've, I've seen these things for decades, it's easy for me to forget. Because seeing all that meat, you want to share the meat, you want to take the big old cleaver and chop off the leg, you know, and pass it around. But you have to start at the beginning. And many members need the milk first. This is a great opportunity to do that. So the question is, what do you mean when you say three are who are testifying? The spirit and the water and the blood. I do not understand what you mean by those entities testifying. Testifying to what? Okay. So then, this is the, the Bible, uh, the, the BibleGateway.com. That's where I like to go. BibleGateway.com. This is what I, when I was debating earlier. Ephesians 4. This is the New American Standard Version, but you look at all the different versions you can get. Lots of different versions. And the one that I wanted to show you, this is the one that Brian uses right here. It's funny that, that on the bottom of the list is because they're alphabetical. This is the one Brian uses, and this right here is the one that Trevor uses right here. And the one that I recommend is the New American Standard. It's from the critical text. It's the, the best translation if your first la language is uh, English. That's the one that I would rec that I highly recommend to everybody. Okay, so this is where I go. This is where the verses all come from that I'm sharing with you. Okay, so this is the quote, and these are the words that I was reading when I was answering Dr. Clifford Denton. And Brian wrote and asked me about, because Dr. Clifford Denton is still out there. I was writing him back in the late 80s, early 90s. And 
and I didn't even have the internet. Then I would have, I remember debating, I used to get these, their, their addresses off the TV, I used to get their addresses out of magazines, and then I would write them with this information right here that was put, laid upon my heart to do that. It was my work. That's what I did. And then they would write back, and I was corresponding back and forth with Dr. Clifford Denton and writing him commentary on these verses whenever all of a sudden I could see something. It's a spiritual thing, like the light shining around a door. And it captivated me for three days. Put down my pen, did not write anything for three days. And then after that period, in prayer, it started, I started seeing the light of what this is about. It's kind of standing where Dr. Laurie is. And saying, what do you mean? She's asking the same questions that I was asking myself because I was trying to write an, a thoughtful reply to Dr. Clifford Denton. This is the one. This one is he who did come through water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not with water only, but with water and the blood. And the Spirit is, it is, that is testifying. Because the Spirit is the truth. Because three are, who are testifying. The Spirit and the water and the blood and the three are into the one. And this is the only translation I've found so far that gets all the verbs, and the nouns, in the right order exactly. This is exactly what the Greek says in the critical text. Where the New American Standard says three are in agreement. It doesn't say in agreement. Some translator decided to transliterate rather than accurately translate what he was written. If you read the Greek, this is exactly what it says. The bracketed part, this is from just three manuscripts in the in the uh, the uh, received text that aren't even there. That shouldn't even be there. They have all these manuscripts, and they have four. They have put it in there about the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the, all that, the Word. That's not even in the manuscripts. Somebody, well, took liberties. So I removed that part. This is exactly what it says. So as I say, she's asking a very good question that speaks to the heart of how God reveals his wisdom using three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water from Genesis 1 through Revelation. And everywhere in between. If you're familiar with the Matrix movie, then I'm in the Morpheus position and you're in the Neo position. And I'm here to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. This is a rabbit hole that is humongous. Once you see the three witnesses, you start seeing them everywhere. You start seeing them everywhere in the Bible. You start seeing them inside yourself. You start seeing them in, everywhere in the cosmos. They are everywhere once you start seeing them. So what my job is to help you be liberated from the matrix, very similar to the way of being enslaved to denominationalism. So many different denominations all talking about the same word of God, one truth. So... I'm assuming that you haven't read my book, The Mystery Explained, and that you're behind in reading the first eight newsletters and watching the, uh, which that's kind of obvious if you're asking, because it was posted last week. The uh, the radio shows and things was, was posted. So, pretty sure that assumption is going to be right. Nothing wrong with that. Let's, uh, let's try to get you, help you get caught up. So, assuming that you haven't read my book yet, and assuming that you're behind on keeping up with what's going on here, then this is where I would send you. This is the update on God's True Bible Code. And then inside of that description box, then you're going to find a link to ChristianForums.com where I posted that, and nobody has responded to it yet. Let me just go there for a second. See what's going on. So this is where the body of Christ began. That's the, the I just answered that this morning at 10:30. But when you come on down here a little bit, God's true Bible code. Oh, there are five answers. There are five replies to this one. I killed the thread right here. See, these are topics that are written. There are threads and there's debate. But whenever you give the answer, then they go to the archives. Everybody talks about other stuff. So this January the 20th. This may be the last time this is written on, unless I what you call bump the topic. If I go to the last and just, you know, I type some comments, hit the reply, it'll send it back to the top of the page. But this is, see the way my name comes at the end? This is very common, even on somebody else's topic. 
Because once you give the answer, it kills the debate. There's nothing else to write about. People go, oh. In, in Countering Biblical Contradictions, I wrote over 30,000 posts back in the 80s and early 90s. No, oh, it was in, into the, uh, kept writing there until, I don't know, 97, 98, until Andrew Tong took it down. I couldn't believe he took it down. I would like to be able to show, take you there today and show you the work that we did. But anyway, this is the, uh, this type of thing here would be all the way down the page. I, I, I earned the, the, uh, the title of, of uh, Thread Killer. That's what they called me. So, it's the mystery of Adam. Almost 300 reads. And nobody was able to reply to anything on that. Don't have anybody that wants to, to, to give a try on uh, providing a rebuttal or, or a, uh, or you know, to write anything for it or against it. Either way, that's that's what I was talking about. We're on the deep end of the pool here. We're talking about God's true Bible code, but that's the post about the discovery that was made, and then the mystery of Adam. Nobody's ever heard of that before. They've heard of the mis God's mystery, First, um, oh, Colossians 2.2, 2, the mystery of Christ, Colossians 4.3, and Ephesians 3.4. Never heard of a mystery of Adam before because it's only taught by the types. Like they've heard of a body of Moses from 1 Corinthians 10, start at 1, and a body of Christ. Ephesians, it's all over the place. Ephesians 4.12, Colossians 1, start at 24. It's all throughout the Pauline epistles. He calls us the body, the body, the body. And that we're members individually, members of one another. It's Romans 12, start at 4. Paul never uses the word bride one time in any of his epistles. We're not the bride of Christ. Some people want to teach us and preach us as the bride of Christ, but we're not. We're the body of Christ. Peter, John, and James in the four Gospels, before Christ died for anybody, Gospel of the Kingdom, those are members of the Kingdom Bride. Two different things. And just mixing those together and creating your new gospel, well, welcome to denominationalism. That's what it's all about. And the reason that I come here is because dispensationalists, and I am not, I cannot post on the, the dispensationalist only topics, I can't post there. These dispensationalists only, I can't post there. I'm not a dispensationalist. Some people think I am, and they call me bad names, derogatory names when they're saying, oh, you're a dispensationalist. I go, the, these dispensationists here, they do not accept me as one of them. They definitely do not. So anyway, this is ChristianForums.com. And I uh, hope that you'll come and you will sub subscribe. You know, you sign up, register, you get yourself a username. And I've been doing this here on this board since 2004. Love to see you over here. Okay, so that's the topic that you're going to be sent to. Whenever you see that video there, this was from a previous report, just like this one. Then you're going to be able to see the pattern a little more, with a little more detail than what you're going to be shown in this report, which I'm trying to do my best to keep it simple and to give you guys enough background information to see where you can go to get more information and the like. So in the beginning, God created the heaven, and that is singular. Even though the New, the new American Standard has it wrong, this is singular, definitely. Created the heaven and the earth. And then, if you've watched my videos before, spirit, blood, water. And this is where the key is for breaking God's code. Once you realize God is spirit, it's exactly what John 4, 24 says. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit. Okay, the sun. This right here is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Because in this infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. All things are made by Him. Right? And without Him was not anything made that was made. That's all there is. God, heaven, and earth. That's, that's it. Now, you're a member of Adam's body here. You're a member of Christ's body here. And you're a member of God's body here. It is really that simple. This is the only realm that's real. These realms are created. It doesn't say in the beginning God created the, the infinite realm. The infinite realm is infinite. The members here are members of God's body. Heaven, members of Christ's body. But there's an antithesis side to this, the satanic side. Okay. 
And then in this room here, you have the heavens, heaven, and earth, just like this that's right here. I pulled up the better diagram for you this week. The heavens, heaven, and the earth. So what was the heaven of Genesis 1, 1 and the word of John 1, 1 through 3 is now the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I know some people that are seeing this, these concepts for the first time are shaking their head and going, holy moly, what in the world is this? But that's, this is where, I need a little bit of logic, my Father who art in heaven, my Father who art in heaven, this is where my Father who art in heaven gets his name from heaven of Genesis 1-1, which is the highest heaven. 1 Kings chapter 8, start 26. And I'm going to mention that to her. David knew all about the highest heaven in the heaven. Highest heaven, heaven. See heaven, highest heaven. And once you see it in these diagrams, then you're going, oh man, look. There's heaven right here. It's it, Because there's a heaven that's begotten in Genesis 1-8. Right? The water's above, the water's below. There's heaven. But then there's heaven in Genesis 1-1. But that escapes the notice of almost everybody. That there's a heaven. And there's a heaven in Genesis 1. This realm here is almost infinite. Each member of this almost infinite realm is almost infinite. Every member of God's body here is infinite. Each cell in God's body, that's us, is infinite here. That's the way he made us. Infinite, perfect, from the day that he made us. He made us. We're members inside of our body already. And then our brethren incarnated inside of us. And we incarnated inside of them. And we all place our brethren around, around a giant table. Some on our right, some on our left, which gives us our personality in heaven. Just because we place our brothers and sisters, which there are no such thing as men and women, but you know what I mean. The more masculine side, the more feminine side. We, we, we still have that. We have, and there, there's no such thing as male or female in heaven, but we still have what appears to be male and female. It's just some are more aggressive, would be characterized by us. Knowing what men and women are here, because the, the day is coming in the future when we meet hosts that have no clue what a man or woman even is. No clue about what an angel is. Never even thought of it before. That's the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1. There was no such thing of an angel. Nobody even conceived what an angel might be. It's only after the earth became formless and void that the heavens and the earth were created reconstitution, reconstituted. And then those realms housed the, the halves of men that were broken. I should say the halves from the immortal souls that were broken. Like Adam was made in Genesis 2-7. He didn't have a soul. I mean, he didn't have a body. He didn't have a spirit. He didn't have a soul. He was a living soul. Because his spirit, body, and soul were all the same thing. Eve inside of him. The seed inside of him. Perfect, just like Genesis 1-1. It's whenever Eve was taken out and then the fall... Then you have Adam, Eve, and Seed having the triune image. The same triune image of God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. The same way, Revelation, uh, Revelation 1.8. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Matthew 28.19. Heaven, heaven, and earth. Genesis 1.6-8. Okay. So, she's asking specifically about the testifying. The testifying. Okay, so when you break down the three witnesses from the one above, then you get these witnesses. Now, my apologies, the PDF rendition of those TIFF diagrams just doesn't come out as clear. So um, the, here's the three witnesses, and when you stand them up, here you're seeing them in linear form. Like tabernacle form. Holy of Holies, Holy Place, the Court. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water the same exact way. And that is also created in the image of a man. The man, Christ Jesus, is right here. The Father is the spirit. The Son is the soul. The Holy Spirit is the body. The heavenly man, 1 Timothy 2.5. There's one God between, right, man. One, one, there's one God and one mediator between God and and man, the man, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, 
Christ Jesus, not a human being man. You see how scripture is written to be interpreted in multiple ways? This is man Christ Jesus. You're thinking of the, the person walking around on the earth as Jesus Christ. But that's not what scripture is saying. A reference to Christ Jesus is a reference to the heaven of Genesis 1.1. Made into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The almost infinite realm into whom we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is Christ Jesus right here. And Paul's writing about Christ Jesus. He's the only one that can write about Christ Jesus. He's the only one that sees the mystery of all this. It's through the wisdom given him, through the Apostle Paul, that these things were even drawn. Had to get it from the Apostle Paul. And then, from what the Apostle Paul said, God leaves us breadcrumb trails in the water witness of Scripture, in the kingdom epistles, New Testament, and in the spirit witness of Scripture, the 39 books of the Old Testament, 13 times 3. Okay. So the earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep until the waters above, where the angels dwell, and the waters below, the earth where the men dwell, the expanse overlapped to beget heaven. This is where the Venn diagrams come in. For this right here, makes me, it reminds me of Luke 135, where the power from on high overshadowed the Holy Spirit and the Son is begotten. He's called the Holy Child, is called the Son of God, the only begotten Son, right there. Begotten in the same exact way the waters above and the waters below beget heaven. Heaven is begotten in Genesis 1 8. The Son is begotten by the overlapping. First, you have the word here, or heaven, whichever you want to call it, because it's the same thing. And then, just like the earth was separated into heavens and earth, this was separated into the, the word was separated, and heaven was separated into the Father and the Holy Spirit. There was darkness upon the face of the deep the same way. You see, so when you're reading Genesis 1 2, about the earth becoming formless and void, the, the word had to be sacrificed. God had to sacrifice his word, so it had a triune image. So he could send the light into heaven of this realm as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. So you have Christ Jesus here, still there right now, which is an incarnation of God's word from the infinite realm. God and his word are still there. We go back through this veil, we're going to be there. God and his word is going to be sitting right there waiting for us. Heaven is an incarnation. Earth is an incarnation inside of the word in whom all things are held together. Colossians 1, this is Christ. This is Christ Jesus right here. In whom all things are made and all things are held together. Two, I show, I've shown you that, uh, that diagram previously. Okay, so this is where, where I begin talking about the heaven and the heaven and the highest heaven. First Kings 8, 27. Break the heaven of Genesis 1 down to realize is the word where God is God, heaven is the word, and the earth is all things. Break God's word, heaven down into three witnesses, and you have the image of a man. And you get my father who is in heaven, the son, and the Holy Spirit. My Father who is in heaven gets his name from being the spirit witness of heaven who testifies about his son like your spirit testifies about your soul. Jesus Christ testifying about my Father who art in heaven helps us understand the relationships existing between, and that word relationships is very important here, the relationships between the three witnesses, the relationships between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. Adam, Eve, and Seed. They all have things in common. Spirit witnesses come first, right? Water witnesses come second. And then the overlapping creates, begets the blood witness. Thing is, once the spirit witness comes, the water witness comes second. The witness that comes last is the blood witness. It's begotten by the overlapping of these two. But the blood witness is the one that's put first. So the last that was first is last. What was first, the blood, the water witness that came first is now last. And the one that came last, the blood witness, is first. Following the spirit witness. Okay? So 
to give you an example, stepping from the Old Testament veil. Do I have those docket that that pulled up for you guys? I don't, but I, I but I want to pull it up for you. Okay, as I'm moving through these diagrams, spirit, blood, water. Looking at the same thing that has the image of the man. This is the same image as the temple, the same image of scripture. And this is a timeline, a prophecy mystery timeline based on, pardon me, God's living word. So these 39 books back here, the final two verses, Elijah's coming to restore the hearts of the fathers to children, which is innocence, and the hearts of children to their fathers, which is immortality. That's what he's coming to restore, all things. John the Baptist steps right through that veil. He is the second veil. This veil right here is the book of Acts. It has a divider that stands between the blood witness and the water witness. But you see, John the Baptist, Christ, and the Twelve, this is a triune ministry here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. The Son says, uh, you can uh, blasphemy John the Baptist. You can blasphemy me. Well, that's what Christ is saying. You can, you can, because this is the Son of Man, little s. This is the Son of Man, big s. Son of God, little s. Son of God, big s. Jesus Christ says, you can blaspheme us. I'm characterizing. But you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Why? What makes the Holy Spirit so much greater than the Father and the Son? It's not. But the thing is, it's being sent last. Day of Pentecost. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Right here, gospel of the kingdom. Stephen is murdered by Israel's own hand. They allowed John the, uh, John the Baptist to be murdered. They demanded that Christ be crucified. And they killed Stephen with using their own hands. Stephen's name, crown. This is what caused the early reigns kingdom bride to be cut off. On the very site of, stone, of the stoning of Stephen, there stands Saul. Gathering up the the, uh, the coats, the coats with all the insignias, the family names, the crests. The judge looks at the crest. He knows exactly who that guy is by looking at the coat. That's how they did things back in the back in in the Christ day. You didn't have to go and stand in front of the judge, but that stack of coats over there with the family emblems. You can tell who each person is by looking at it. When you pass them in the street, you know their family name. They have their family crest. Okay, on the very site that Stephen was killed, there stands Paul, and God raised Paul up. That's what I was writing on this morning. Right here on this site, and then this blood witness is begotten. Right between the water witness, I mean the spirit witness in the Old Testament, and the water witness. So the day of the Lord actually started right here with John. But this is the day of the Lord activities. This is seen by the Old Testament prophets. That Elijah is coming to restore all things. Here he comes. Israel rejects it. God knew Israel was going to reject it. God knew that Eve was going to fall the moment she was taken from Adam's side. It's all part of the plan. So Israel was chosen. Yeah, they're the chosen race. It's like Eve was chosen for something, but what were they chosen for? They were chosen to transgress. That's what they were chosen for. Because we're re replaying, reproducing events that happened in the infinite realm that led to the murder of Adam. Transgression, beguiling, is how it happened. So here's the blood witness that was last. Paul came last. He came, he doesn't get converted until Acts 9. And yet, this veil is pushed right together here with the Old Testament veil because this Paul's ministry is the blood ministry of Jesus Christ. See how it's read? See how we're saved? By the blood of Christ? Our forgiveness is through his shed blood. But that's not what John the Baptist preached. He preached repentance and baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Water gospel. They had to be baptized in water. But the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. We're saved by his blood. They're saved by water baptism. Now some people want to say, well, the water baptism doesn't really save. I beg your pardon. That's what John the Baptist preached out of the gate. Sins were given. That's how Peter, John, and James were saved. Christ hadn't died for anybody. How do you think people got saved? In the four Gospels. The gospel of the Kingdom. And Christ says that it's going to be preached to the end of the age. And it will be. 
because this is a parenthetical period. Our gospel of the grace of God will not be preached here. It's impossible because every preacher is going to be taken off the planet at this rapture that's about to happen. We're going to be gone. No preacher, to, God can't send the preacher with the Holy Spirit in him, with the faith of Jesus in him, to preach the gospel message if they're all in heaven. There's none left. Elijah's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom again, just like John the Baptist Christ in the 12 right here, because this administration, the kingdom administration, is going to pick up where it left off right here. That's why Christ says, Elijah is coming and he will restore all things. Matthew 17, start 10. If, Acts 3, that Moses, Peter's quoting Moses saying that God's going to send a prophet like me, Elijah and Moses. If you look at the Mount of Transfiguration, you'll see them both standing there. The Elijah that Christ says is coming to restore all things is the prophet of Acts 3, start at 19, until you get to 26. Who, whoever does not heed his word is going to be utterly destroyed from among the people. Utterly destroyed. Most powerful thing that ever walked this earth is going to be Elijah when he's coming. He's not coming here to die on a cross. He's coming here to restore all things. We're going to be sitting in the heavenly places whenever that's taking place. The only reason that Elijah can come here and, and restore all things is because the devil's chained in all of his minions right here. The day of the Lord begins. They're chained. We are raptured. We go to the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.10 We're going to receive the rewards. We're going to occupy those heavenly seats. Heaven's going to be restored. And earth is going to be restored on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven so the lamb and us we're doing in heaven what Elijah and Israel's doing on the earth and we're going to continue doing it until Elijah is recognized first as the prophet then he's going to be recognized as the King David here is another Here's the thousand years day of the Lord. It's over here. That's about to start right here. This is where we are today. But this, whenever this book was written, these diagrams were drawn. And that was back in 2004, 2005, 15 years ago. Hmm. Needless to say, that is closer to this edge. It's right where they're, we're coming up to the veil right now. I, I talk about it. We're going to pass through this veil right here. The rapture is going to happen. We're going to be gone. It's not just us either. Bad guys, there's, there's an antithesis rapture of the wicked they're gone too. They're already in the lake of fire. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. Ephesians 2, start at 4. On the other side of the equation, whenever they disbelieve, when they believe these false gospels, denominationalism, the spirit of iniquity has them by the nose. They cannot get things right. There's nothing you can do to help them to see anything because the looting influence has them blinded. That's why we have so many different denominations. So this water witness... I'm trying to focus on the three witnesses here. This came first, the spirit witness. Then, here come Peter, John, and James. But they're way over here. Because what, what the, the uh, water witness that was supposed to be here was made last. The blood witness, Apostle Paul's ministry, came first, put in front of the water witness. And that gives us this pattern right here. The same pattern you see if you stand it up. It's a man. Same thing. That man is not a human man. It has nothing to do with being a human being. It has everything to do with being three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. And just as a little side little nugget, God has his own numerology, and the spirit witnesses are number one. They come first. And then the, these water witnesses that were came second. I'm shaking my head. They're made third. So instead of having the number two, this says the number three. One, two, three. One plus two plus three equals six. Six is the number of man. That's the reason why. Six is the number of man. When you ask a minister to tell you what's the number of man, he's going to say six. When you ask him why, he ain't going to have a clue. Ask him. Because the truth is, spirit, blood, and water. One, two, three. One plus two plus three equals six. Your spirit plus your soul plus your body gives you the number six. God who is, God who was, God who is to come. God who is to come. One, two, three. Six. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Six. The number of the tabernacle? Six. It has a three sections. Two veils, just like we do. Spirit, blood, and water. 
the number that number you see once you see it that is really amazing stuff scripture same thing has the number of six it has the old testament pauline epistles and the kingdom epistles of the new testament 13 13 and 39 this is the book of acts is the odd book that has features and characteristics of water and blood but you see where it's what i just read to you that jesus christ comes in blood and water he comes in yeah blood and water not in water only not just in kingdom but in water and in blood kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine and they're all within that same sphere that i started showing you right here at the beginning blood and water this is what jesus christ is all about he also shares his relationship the soul with the spirit outside the veil of time and space that's how god chooses us in christ before the foundations of the world because of this relationship so this is a dual thing and it's not that christ is man is god he's the son of god and it's not that he's a man either he's not a man he's conceived of the holy spirit no DNA from some people get mad when I say that, but guess you're gonna have to get over it, or get or just stay mad at me because the truth. Scripture says, Matthew one eighteen and twenty, that he's conceived of the Holy Spirit, the overlapping of the Father and the Holy Spirit. You see, he's also of the Father, too. Right, but this is infinite. This is a drop of water, infinite drop of water. Christ almost infinite. He's something in between God and men. Not infinite, not the drop of water either. Something between this entire realm. When he talks about the kingdom of heaven, he said, He that is that among those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist, because John the Baptist is another skin for Adam. He's this whole realm. But the least that's in this realm is greater than him. The least in this realm is Peter. And he's still almost infinite. This is still a drop of water compared to Peter, who's the least, you see. So I want to um, go back up and refresh our minds on what Dr. Laura is asking. So she says, the question is, what do you mean when you say three who are testifying, the spirit and the water and the blood? I don't understand what you mean by those ent entities testifying. Testifying to what? So if we use this example, God is testifying from Genesis 1.1. Heaven is testifying from Genesis 1.1. Earth is testifying from Genesis 1.1. All three of these witnesses are testifying in John 1, 1 through 3. The Word is incarnate in John 1, 14. They are testifying constantly. When you read the scriptures and you know the testimony of each, then you're able to recognize God is a spirit witness, Christ is a blood witness, Earth is a water witness, and you're able to go through and see God's infinite realm, God who is, God who is, God who is to come, God who was, those three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. These are the realms from the first diagram that I showed you. God's infinite realm, the realm of the word or heaven, adamant creation, earth. Okay, now the realm of the Word, that's heaven, or the Word, whichever you want to call it. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's that simple. So you know that the Son talks about the Holy Spirit as a helper. He says, I must go away. If I don't go away, I can't send a helper. If I go away, I'll send him to you. He had to leave so the Holy Spirit could come to start his ministry. And the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit wasn't because the Holy Spirit is greater than the Father or the Son. The Holy Spirit is not. It's the same as woman, the weaker vessel. It's because once you blasphemy the Father by, by uh, allowing John the Baptist to die, once you blasphemy the Son by demanding his crucifixion, then all that's left is the Holy Spirit ministry that started on the day of Pentecost. Once you blasphemy that, which they did with Stephen, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that he's talking about. In other words, God is a baseball fan. I mean, he invented everything. He invented the game, but it's three strikes and you're out. That's the rule. And so that's, that's what he's saying when, um, when you blasphemy the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Because by, if, that means that you have already blasphemed against the Father and the Son. So whenever you allow John the Baptist to die in prison, you haven't blasphemed 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit yet. Christ had to be crucified first. And then, after the day of Pentecost, the reason that those two chapters, Acts 6 and 7, are written the way they are, and focusing in on Stephen, and he's full of the Holy Spirit. All the types are there. And they, that Israel's rejecting the crown, that, that's what Stephen's name means. He's re, all three witnesses are being rejected with the, with the rejection of the third one. Okay, so then the thrones, God's throne, Christ's throne, David's throne. That's what I was saying. Which David is another skin for Adam. Adam. Adam ruling on the throne forever, that's what God intended. When the Lord God created him in the first place, back in the garden. That's what he was creating. The prophet, priest, and king of the earth, just like Christ in heaven, is the prophet, the priest, and the king. He has an earthly counterpart. That's what Adam is. That's why there's a first Adam of the earth, and the last Adam is the king of heaven. Eventually, heaven and earth become the same thing. That's, how, that's what it means to restore all things. But when you go down the list of the transfiguration, Elijah, Christ, and Moses, spirit, blood, water, three witnesses. This is the priest, this is the prophet, he's the king. And that's the same as these witnesses. Prophets are over here in the spirit. Kings, they're blood witnesses. Priests, all priests, water witnesses. Who else is called a helper? Go all the way back to Genesis 2. Eve is his helper, water witness, just like the Holy Spirit. God gives us these clues for a reason so that you can see the Holy Spirit is the water witness in the same position as Eve, serving her seed like the sun. So then you can tie together the seed, which is Christ, right? And Adam. Adam, Eve, and seed, three witnesses of the garden. Moses, Christ, and Elijah, three witnesses of the transfiguration. You're looking at the first, and you're looking at the last because everybody in time is going to be baptized into Christ. That seed is going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. And the spirit witnesses and the water witnesses, which in this case is the angels and the men, eventually are going to not be non-existent anymore because they're all reunited to their own selves. They become living souls again. They all live in heaven. Eventually, all the angels are reunited with their man half. And they're, everybody's in heaven and there's nothing left to restore. So you have an empty shell of the heavens, an empty shell of the earth. There's empty, there's no hosts. Because all of them have been redeemed. All of them have been made one again. They all have a heavenly existence. Talked about that last week. The last one to go up, the uh, Jacob's Ladder, is David, who is Adam. The first man is going to be the last one to go up Jacob's Ladder at the end of all the ages. Okay, I was further down here. So the 1 plus 2 plus 3, pardon me, again, that's right here. You see the veils just like a man. So hopefully what you're seeing with this presentation is that the science of the big, God, heaven, earth, that's everything. And then the small. And you get down to the tabernacle, spirit, blood, water, veils. Scripture, spirit, blood, water, veils. And eventually, before I go any further, I want to tie this into a knot right here for you. Eventually, you're going to realize this is looking at things backwards from what you saw before. See the Spirit Witness over here? The Holy of Holies is on the other side now. And this is Christ, the, whole, the holy place. This is heaven. This is the infinite realm, heaven and the earth. And we, this is us right here. Our spirit, see your spirit, your soul, your body. Then, when the preacher comes, he has the Holy Spirit in him. Temple of the Holy Spirit. He has the faith of Jesus. That's our possession. That's what we received from the previous preacher, the one that preached to us. That faith of Jesus. 1 Corinthians. Is it, I'm going to have, it's verse 26, 326. Okay, but the translation is the faith of Jesus. We could, but go look at the Greek and you can see the N, E-N. The faith, I'm, I'm sorry. This is going, not the faith in Jesus. That's not what's not there. I had it backwards. It is the faith of Jesus. 
that what was milled out for us a Calvary. And then combined with the Holy Spirit of promise, it's Ephesians 1, start at 13. Spirit of the Word, the Holy Spirit of promise, and the beginning of the faith of Jesus. That's what comes into our soul. And then, this is the new, mate, the new nature, the new man. The new inner man comes from a something that is spiritual and physical. The faith of Jesus is actual your possession. This is the difference to the change in you from before you believe the gospel until after you believe the gospel. This is what happened in between this new nature planted itself like in a garden in your soul to begin growing. You feed it the word especially the word from the Pauline epistles. All of Scripture is living, but not, not all of Scripture is active. Old Testament Scripture is active for Israel. The kingdom epistles coming. When Elijah starts saving people through the gospel of the kingdom, when Elijah starts saving people and they're in the gospel of the kingdom, and we can use this one. Over here, the gospel of the kingdom will be the gospel. And that's where the um, late, rain, late rain's bride is going to be gathered right here. Peter, John, and James, they're going to be raised with us right here at the first resurrection. That starts the day of the Lord. Peter, John, and James, they're going to be standing at the Lord's right hand. We are baptized into his body. It's going to be a, some time before Peter, John, and James realize that they're not the big chickens that they think they are. Standing in front of the Lamb, they're looking around into heaven, and they look like they're the stuff. Whenever they finally make it into the Lamb with us, to the marriage supper of the Lamb, then they're going to realize, man, we are not the stuff. Those that are serving on the sea of glass don't know enough to be jealous yet. The Lord God fulfills that promise at the marriage supper of the Lamb. They're all excited, like on a wedding night. They get you reunited with their angel half. They walk right inside the Lamb, where we already are. And then they see us. And at some point they realize we haven't been there forever and ever and ever to be called the elders that we were the last the Gentiles that were made first ahead of Israel and they're not going to be happy about that at all so this is the one two three that I was sharing with you right here six is the number of man and then Laura's question in your statement that God is testifying through the spirit witness and created heaven the blood witness and earth the water witness I'm not sure I understand what it means to be a witness in the context that you are describing so I'm a loss to wrap my head around these concepts and Dr. Laura you're not alone many many most of the people that we try to share this with in the world they're never going to be able to wrap their head, wrap their head around it and some of the members of Christ's body for those whom Christ died they're going to be able to see bits and pieces of it, not put the whole picture together. We have babes in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, start at 1, and you have the mature in Christ. And that's in the chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, start at 6. And there's a large gap in between. So you're going to see bits and pieces of this, and it, but by you asking your questions, it helps me to see what you cannot see and the things that I can put in my presentation to help you to see better. And then to pray for you, like you're praying for me. This, this, this terrible, this going through some ter real terrible things uh, at this time. And um, so that is why Paul teaches that we have countless tutors in Christ, which is a good reason to be a subscriber to the Mystery Report newsletter chat program. Highly recommend that you try to find time to begin at the beginning in the Mystery Report. 001, the first one, and go through the lessons. See, so there's been eight. This is the ninth in the series. And at last week, number three was being uploaded. This week, it's number four that's being uploaded to the Dropbox folder. If you start at the beginning and go through all the newsletters, even if you just read the opening, what I'm reading to you right here, the opening report, then you're going to, the, the First one is going to be on the two Gospels, then the two churches, the four baptisms, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, the differences between God, my Father, and heaven, how the mystery diagrams work. 
Okay, and now I'm kind of lingering before jumping into the Mystery Explained to try to get as many people as possible near the same level so that we can kind of all do that together. And it may be six months before I decide to, to take it to the next level. And what's going to be the determining factor is not whenever I so desire. It's going to be by listening to your questions. It's like raising your kids has a lot. Ha having a ministry is a lot like raising children. I have children. I have grandchildren. Then you are going to judge. You're not. Whenever you have a five-year-old, you're not going to bring up the topic of sex, for example. What you're going to do is, is when you hear the question, then you're going to shape your question based upon how they asked it, how much information they appear to already have, and how much you want to add to it, right? You're going to answer their question, and then you're going to let them go and grow, and then they're going to come back with a little more complicated question. When By the time they're 7, 8, 9, 10, well, by, the t by the time, you know, they're in junior high and in high school, they're asking the more complicated questions, and then you're ready to go into more detail. Pretty much going to be the same way. If, if you, you know, for the same reasons that you, that you wouldn't give the whole story to a five-year-old, then that's what the, that's what my goal is. I, I I try to be aware. I'm sure that Brian and Trevor they want to run ahead, and I can remember going to Bible study every Monday night for five years with a a lady minister and uh, Judy Bailey, bless her heart, and her mother Catherine Smith, who taught me this lady was so frail that I was afraid that she was going to fall down and hurt herself. She must have been 80-something. She lived downstairs from me in an apartment that I lived back in the 80s and 70s and, eight, and early 80s. Okay, So um, I used to run downstairs and have Bible study with her once a week. And then on uh, Mondays, then we would drive to her, um, her daughter's house. And we sat and she had you know, about 30 people, something like that. And I was, I grew, grew up more and more rather rapidly. And I remember being disappointed whenever they had a new person come in because then Judy would put it down in low gear, creeper gear, and begin at the beginning again. And then I felt like it, the whole week was wasted because I really wanted the meat, really wanted the meat. Give me the meat, right? So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. And now I realize... In talking with Kathy, with writing back and forth from Kathy, and hearing Dr. Lawrence's questions, that it's likely that we need to go a little slower before we're ready to jump in, build the foundation a little better, get everything just right, so that when we build the house on top of it, then. Um, so, um, oh, and I pre appreciate Dr. Lawrence very much you telling me about whenever you that you feel my pain that you have gone through. What, I, what we're going through right now, and you did it with five kids, and I'm I'm just holding the side of my head, going, just can't imagine, just cannot imagine what you went through with uh, you and your five kids. Must have been really terrible. So um, we are doing better now. Hopefully that the the bug thing is over, and um, that it's still going to take time for us to recover from all that, um, physically, emotionally. The emotional part of this is very destructive and it, it, it takes it's like climbing yourself out of a hole and you have to throw a lot of your clothes a lot of your possessions are just thrown away you have to start all over it's, um, financially t between the doctor bills and and the medicines and everything that you have to do and throwing away everything away then it's it's really it's a big setback so I really appreciate uh, that you're writing and getting me more on the uh, the simple on the simple things, even though I, uh, I'm trying to remember going back whenever I'm first learning these things and then trying to look at the perspective of what I'm sharing. And then I, the, to some, it's still going to be complicated, the things that I'm sharing, even though I'm doing my best to keep it simple. Then the best thing that you can do is to continue asking questions. The more questions that you ask, the easier it is for me to see what needs to be shared each week to help everybody kind of be on the same page. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So how, how do you join the uh, chat room activities? It's answered right here. Just go to the website. And I hope that you're sharing these videos. It's just, just a, like 200 subscribers 
here at the, on this channel. Hope that you're sharing them with other people. Give us the opportunity to get our numbers up. And uh, Oh, I was going to go show you the website just for a second. This, you find me here Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesday mornings pretty much. Wednesdays, Thursdays, Black Star. And even today, Black Star. But um, So these are the days when you're going to find me here. I hope that more people will, because you can ask your questions right here. You can click on my topic. That's right. Here we go. Three Kingdoms. The Three Kingdom Baptisms versus ours for today. Click on it and you can ask me a question. And then that, my answer to you, will go into the weekly newsletter to help other people. But um, what I was going to show you is down here. Black Star, premium program, survival group program, mystery report, $25, two bucks a month. You get four newsletters, four or five newsletters a month. And then you decide you want more, you want to join us in chat. All those instructions come with your notification email, your Dropbox photo link notification email, just $50 per year right there. And you get the ebook version of my book, The Mystery Explained, attached right to your uh, notification email for free. If you're not familiar with PayPal, I've been a, had an account there since 2004. It's the number one payment gateway in the world, and I think it's going to stay that way. So you just click on this right here, and it's real easy. You're protected. I'm protected. And it's a real e it's, it's how my book key, keeping my accounting system works is through PayPal. That's how your notification emails are sent. If you're a Black Star newsletter subscriber, all of those notification emails have been sent. So if you didn't get one, then write me and then at the special email address, not at the website. Right. And then I'll get that to you right away. If you're if you're using you were a 2019 subscriber to the mystery report, just use the same Dropbox folder link. That's uh, the one that I showed you. Because it's the same one, just 57 newsletters are going to be going in there. Had to start in December because it would be impossible, impossible to do it through January. To get everything going is really tough. Okay, now back over here. Um, how do you receive the mystery newsletters letter reports? Click on those buttons. I'll send you the Dropbox folder link, copy my book, and you're on your way. You get questions, you have an email address there to write me, just like Dr. Laura did. Then this, I'm um, looking at the time, don't want to go much longer. The three, key, three kingdom baptisms versus the one baptism for today. This is the fellow that's, uh, he's getting his... He, this guy debated with me back in 2004, 5, and 6. He doesn't see it yet. He says, uh, he's trying to be polite. I always try to be polite to everybody, even when I disagree with him. He says, thank you too, but I'm not going to repeat what I believe is a false teaching, distorting the gospel. I give people cr credit for being intelligent enough to read the opening post. I'm just kind of shaking my head. So in other words... I'll ask them these questions in closing. That's why you see originals up here. This is the opening post. This is the original reply. This is my original reply to him. Then he comes back at me again. Down here. There's a method to all these links and madness. When you follow along, you're searching the scriptures diligently. You're following along. Then you're going to see how my clarifying statements make the point and defend the opening post. Every time you see OP, it's a reference to the opening post. That's the thing. If you're, uh, if you're not a board forum person, debate person, you don't know what that means. And, um, I was writing out opening post, but now, if you guys are following me, OP, opening post. There's my work. He's trying to refute it. So I asked him at the end of that other reply, do you see the two Gospels? Do you see the two churches? Answering no would explain why you appear to be mixing the doctoral precepts, teaching the two Gospels and two churches together. To create a one gospel and one church that has no place in biblical reality. This guy really believes there's only one gospel and one church. And anybody that says otherwise is condemned to the lake of fire forever. This is what he writes. Absolutely, I say no to both false teachings. This is a conclusion that I'm pre pre I'm teaching false teachings. You don't draw your conclusions first. You lay out the evidence so that the reader draws your conclusion, then if you want to pass judgment, you don't do it right out of the starting gate. 
that's not good. And he's already admitted to being lazy. He's not going to give a good reply because he just figures everybody else not going to be baffled, not going to be, because he thinks he's got it and he doesn't. Here, here are the scriptures that he's using to support what he's saying. He says, uh, this is not, um, absolutely, I say no to both teachings that have only uh, came in recent in the recent past as if it's created by dominationalism this is not what has been passed down to the saints right up to today from the apostolic oh my goodness well i said apostolic but he's talking yeah historic apostolic churches you know his apostolic churches are peter john and james based so i reject your judgment on me mixing things up scripture doesn't do that men do well, that's what i'm saying of course you're allowed to have your you can take a blue pill Wake up in your little matrix and believe whatever you want to believe. I'm fine with all that. But still, our job is to defend the truth. That's what the opening post is. And that's, he's going he's gonna to try to write a rebuttal to what I'm writing. It's a good idea when you're doing that to focus on the subject and not your debating opponent. Whenever you run out of arguments is when you're going to start attacking your debating opponent. opponent. Always remember that. If they're attacking you, they don't have a case. Especially when they do it right out of the starting gate. Okay, scripture doesn't do that. Men do, seeking to confuse the unity in the spirit. Because according to him, his interpretation is right and mine is wrong. So here's where he's quoting Ephesians 4 and Ephesians 2. And he's going to like quote, I like to leave their entire reply intact without taking it apart first. I show you the whole thing. You believe like him? So according to him, there's one eternal kingdom, one king, one flock, one shepherd, one. There's just room for one of everything. There can't be more than one, right? Well, there's one bride, Peter, John, and James, and there's one body. I mean, he's right about that. But when you try to make the bride and the body into one thing, that's not, that's not, no place in reality. So I thank him for writing on the topic. Okay, he says he's not going to repeat himself. And whenever somebody says that, I remember my mom saying that, I'm not going to tell you again that I like thank god you know because you're going to not bring this up again but he is going to keep bringing it up he says uh he the, so first i quoted his whole thing now i quote a little piece of it and then give my answer this is my original quote this is what he said and i say a good idea might be to make a case using scripture before even laying out the substance of your unsupported opinions and conclusions the fallacy of your no to both false teachings is easily pr um, proven the fallacy what he's saying is false by pointing to the truth from God's word so this is the way it, this is the way you tear somebody's um, little temple down he just says there's only one okay he says there's only one gospel gospel of the kingdom okay now John's going out preaching the gospel Jesus coming out preaching the gospel Matthew I mean, there's all kinds of verses Matthew 4 23 preaching the gospel of the kingdom repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand Matthew 4 17 okay that's what's being preached over here Christ hasn't died for anybody yet this is his water ministry Dr. Lord was asking about water and blood this is the water ministry gospel of the kingdom every word Christ is saying is about the water every word that he gives to Paul through revelation is the blood all that testimony in the scriptures is testi it's testifying constantly without stopping all the time once you know what each of these characters represent spirit blood or water then you know that Paul speaking as a blood witness right Peter speaking as a water witness James is speaking as a water witness they're teaching kingdom doctrine Paul's teaching grace doctrine Paul's writing to someone else James saying that if you um, you keep the whole law and you stumble in one point, you're guilty of all. James 2.10. That's not written to you. We don't try to reconcile what Paul is saying to the Romans with what James is saying to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. They're not supposed to reconcile. They're different messages. Paul's teaching grace doctrine to the members of Christ's body. James, Peter, John, they're teaching kingdom doctrine to the bride. That's the water ministry. Paul is the blood ministry. So you can apply the water and the blood throughout the Bible. It even has blood parts, water parts. And in some places in the Pauline epistles, water 
kingdom doctrine is being te taught to the Corinthians, particularly 1 Corinthians chapters, what is it, 11, 12, 13, 10, 11, 12. Whenever you see him, Paul talking about Cleo's people, is that chapter 10? And those are of Paul, those are of Apollos, those are say that I'm of Peter, I'm of Cephas. Those are people that were baptized in water by Peter and by Paul. The house of Stephanus, Paul, baptized him because he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Paul preached both gospels. That's why he says to the Jew first, gospel of the kingdom, and to the Greek, the gospel of the grace of God. Now, Scripture is written in such a way so that to deceive, you say, well, why would God do that? It's because he's going to give you the truth as a son of God, and the children of disobedience are going to interpret it a completely different way. And they're going to be destroyed by distorting the wisdom given him, Paul. They're going to mix it all. There's no water and blood to them. It's just all one thing, just like what this guy's saying. That's why he was chosen. Well, plus also, it was because of the dates. When I decide which, I'm providing clarifying statements. This is the topic that these people at ChristianForums.com decided to write on this same day that I was there. So if you notice, these dates are all going to be yesterday. So it's not like that they sat there for a long time. So I'm going to go through and offer up. I mean, you can go through the newsletter. I'm not going to go through everything. Don't have time to do that. I'm only on page 10. We're an hour and 16 minutes in, according to my clock. Okay, so this fellow here, he is giving us, this is the important part. He's writing from Ephesians. He's writing from Ephesians. Well, Paul in the book of Ephesians, and it says there's one body. He's writing to members of Christ's body. For the members of Christ's body, there is only one gospel. The gospel of the grace of God. The only gospel. If they come and preach you the gospel of the kingdom, that's another gospel. It is. The reason is because God chose you to be a member of Christ's body. He chose you to judge the world and the angels. He chose you to put your angel half and your man half back together again. He didn't choose Peter, John, and James for that. They're standing on the sea of glass even in the future after their resurrection. Because their, the first resurrection for them is not going to be anything like ours. Our angel half and our man half, we're already seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. Our incarnation in the Lamb is going to be an incarnation. Peter, John, and James are going to be standing there as resurrected men. Their angel half is going to be on the invisible sea. They can't even see. They don't even know it's there. It's not written about in the scriptures. The only way you know it's there is the same way that you know about the mystery of Elijah. There's a mystery of Christ. There's a body of Christ. The members are being baptized into his body. That's the mystery of Christ. There's members being baptized in the body of Moses. Peter, John, and James. That's not what we want. We want to be in Christ. They're going the long way. And their angel half is on the invisible sea standing behind them. 100% for sure, that's what the mystery types teach. Once you can see them. Okay. So he's going to stand in the Pauline epistles and insist that there's one gospel whenever he's refusing to go back to Mark 1, where Jesus Christ himself is preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of God. The Son of God himself is preaching. People like Peter, John, and James get saved, and yet he cannot see through his thick lenses of denominationalism that there are two different gospel messages. Christ didn't go around saying, hey, kill me for your, for the forgiveness of your sins. You will be saved by my shed blood. No, that doesn't work. They were supposed to accept the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, the king, but the, the part that people miss is that he's the king of heaven. That's why he told Pilate, John chapter 18, start at 36. My kingdom is not even of this world. It's not of this world. It's not even of this realm. Because guess who was supposed to be the earthly Messiah? Who was the Messiah that was not recognized? John the Baptist. Say, oh, but he was the son of a priest. Yeah, but he says he was more than a prophet. Who's the son of a priest that's more, of a, more than a prophet? The only person in the entire kingdom that's greater than the prophet is the king. Christ is telling you that he's the prophet, priest, and king, the same prophet, priest, and king he made for the earth, the whole universe, just like he's the prophet, priest of heaven. And some people have a millennial kingdom where earth is rules on earthly throne, and it just makes me laugh. It's not going to happen that way. Christ is going to be in heaven, the Lamb of God, 
is in the he in heaven for the entire time of revelation until we return with him. Colossians ch um, chapter 3, start at verse 1. When you get to 4, you'll realize, holy mackerels, when Christ is revealed in glory, we're going to be revealed with him. We're coming back with him. And there's some people that are blind, and they're waiting for him to come now, as if now is the end of the age. Well, how are you going to come back with him in glory? You have to take the first chapter of Colossians and just throw it away because it doesn't fit just like it doesn't it just doesn't fit into your theology. That's what denominationalism does to people. So there are no contradictions in my Bible because I have it set rightly divided to spirit, blood, and water. If you don't do that and you try to put everybody into one group, you're going to have to twist the scriptures. And that's what this guy's doing. These both groups that he's talking about here broke down the dividing wall, Jews and Gentiles. That's true. Paul taught, he first he preached the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews, practicing Jews, like Peter, John, and James, that obey the law and everything. Then he went to the Gentiles, and guess who's among them? The Jews that are not keeping the law. Half Jews, like the Samaritans. Right? Those are the ones that are being put into one group, whether they're Jew or Gentile. All you have to do is obey the gospel. It doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. No such thing in heaven. Everybody is one in Christ. But that doesn't mean everybody in the world is baptized into Christ. You have to obey our gospel. And there's some people that think, well, Christ died for sins. That means we're all saved. That's universalism, and it's wrong. If Christ's blood saved every soul, there's no reason to have the gospel. There is a reason to have the gospel. That's how God calls the body through the blood gospel and the, the bride through the water gospel. And God's not done with the water gospel yet. After we're raptured, Elijah's going to restore all things. And he's going to preach the water gospel. Because the first, the last that was us, was made first. He's gathering us first. And then he's going to gather them last to the end of the age. We are nowhere near the end of the age. The black star comes to start the day of the Lord. That's happening now. 3,600 years from now will be the end of the age. That's where the Great Tribulation is. So if you're a pre-tribulation rapture theory guy, as long as your rapture happens 3,600 years before the tribulation, then you're right. If you think that they're anywhere connected to happening at the same time, then you're going to be wrong. Based upon the truth of Scripture. So then I have to say to him, after he says there's one of this and one of that, you don't see any scripture here. No, Peter, John, and James are representing the prophetic kingdom bride gathered by the gospel of the kingdom when Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus show up at the famous meeting in Jerusalem. Galatians 15, Galatians, I mean, uh, Acts 15, Galatians 2. Peter doesn't even understand the truth of the gospel. He gets rebuked by Paul in Galatians 2, start at verse 11. Peter wasn't straightforward about the truth of the gospel. He didn't even understand the gospel. Our gospel. Go back to Galatians 2, start at verse 1. He sent by revelation to, sent to, to go and submit the gospel to Peter, John, and James. They didn't know what it was. They thought that Paul's Gentiles were joining them like Cornelius. Paul had to tell them, no, this is something brand new. Brand new. Our gospel is according to the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16, start at 25. This gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, was seen by the prophets. The betrothing of Israel kingdom coming, Elijah coming to restore all things. Nobody saw Paul in the Old Testament. Nobody sees our body of Christ. Nobody sees our redemption through Christ shed blood. If the devil would have seen that, if God didn't keep that hidden in himself, the devil would have seen it and not crucified him. God had to keep it a secret. That's why the prophets couldn't see it. Prophets can't prophesy about things hidden in God. That's why he get raised up Paul, to show us all those things. Okay, so this is getting really really long there's a whole bunch of supporting arguments here whole bunch Christian debate where did the body of Christ begin that's the one that I just wrote on hit the button at 1030 at 1030 this morning there's your answer began in Acts 9 but these dispensationalists some of them believe in Acts 2 that the church started in Acts 2 Peter preaches water baptism there Paul's not raised to Acts 9. And he's not necessarily saved on the road to Damascus either. He's on the road to Damascus when he's struck down. He's raised up after sending Ananias, Ananias on the road called Straight 
in the house of guess who? Judas. That's whenever the scales fall from his eyes. That's, and that's when Ananias finally caught up to him. And the Lord told him where he was to be caught up. And then there's, uh, so you have uh, progressive, traditional, If I hope I got this right, I studied this years ago. Traditional Disbies, Acts 2, and the church didn't even start there. Acts 9 Disbies, they call them, uh, I don't know, progressives or whatever. This is what it really is. And then Acts 13, because whenever the Holy Spirit says, separate unto me Paul with Saul and Barnabas, this is where uh, you see his uh, name being, it appears that his name being changed. Paul's name doesn't get changed. He's just known as, like most of the people that lived back in that time, then they had their Hebrew name and they had their Greek name. So they were known as two different things. Saul, whenever he, Saul went into the, uh, among the Pharisees, he was Saul all day long. Nobody called him Paul. But whenever the Lord God sent him to the Gentiles specifically, then he used, you see in the, in, in the verse there that it says also known as Paul. And from that moment forward, Paul is only mentioned as Paul. He's the apostle sent to the Gentiles. And there are the hyper-dispensationalists, and there are more than just three or four different kinds. There's like 20 different kinds of them. Acts 28, 28, when Paul finally is going to the Israel no more. I'm done with Israel. I'm just going to the Gentiles. Just the gospel of the grace of God. He intimates on that back in Acts 20. Start at 24. Those of you that I went about preaching the kingdom will see my face no more. Because he wasn't preaching the gospel of the kingdom anymore. He was just going to the gospel of the grace of God. He saw what God was doing. He was putting the kingdom dispensation in abeyance. He was going on the back burner. The body of Christ was the big chicken. The big deal. That's still happening to this day. Okay. Revelation and synchronous earth tells. This is from Catherine. This is the top of the featured section. And uh, so Catherine writes, Whenever I hear you speak about those lava blobs and how they are pushing and spreading under the earth's crust and then mention horns being pushed up, I am nudged in my mind to think about Revelation. Several passages in that book speak of the beast with seven heads and ten horns and I counted the leading edges of the blobs on your graphic diagram and it shows seven heads and the number of horns that pushed up have been have been many but I see they are becoming less and less as the thing expands and stays full and you know what you're right those horns form easily whenever you have magma wave action going through narrow corridors so the pressure at 600 uh, 660 kilometers at the bottom is extremely high. The lowest pressure is right on top of the 410 discontinuity, discontinuity line. So when you get that added pressure, that's what causes near the terminal end of the magma plume formation. The arm that reaches out has a terminal end. So the all the waves, they coalesce at that terminal end to get the expansion. That's when the horns form. It becomes a permanent structure. Then the pressure, all that pressure in that magma horn, and the whole extended arm gets pushed back to the origination zone. Well, that horn is still there. It's just laying over. The next waves come up and pushes it higher, and then you get more expansion. That's how these arms expanded all the way around the world. Okay. So then um, she says, um, it was, is not now, and is to come. Sounds like, or sounds orb-like to me. And the, um, the article I'll suggest that the seventh kingdom could be so this is her uh this is the article you can check it out see what it, exactly what it says and she's reading uh, rebecca roth and then this is going to be my my reply thank you for writing and sharing my view is that any correlations between revelation prophecies and magma plume formation are are coincidental we are living inside the mystery time see we're living inside this mystery time now you're talking about what's physical that happens over here and towards the end of the age too okay the prophets were never allowed to see what's in here so they can't prophesy about what's hidden in god only paul can see the day of the lord comes like a thief in the night because the old testament prophets weren't allowed to see how the day of the lord starts they only see how it ends paul was the one giving the information how it starts and it begins with destruction that black star is going to come body of Christ is going to be taken and the destruction is going to follow. 
So is it going to be the geological pole shift tipping the earth over? Is it going to be the mat, the Boise barrier quarters breaking, sending poison in the sky, pyroclastic flows? So all of the shorelines, 90% of the world population lives near the shorelines. Nine, that's 90% of the population is going to be gone. So the, the, the wave action from the ocean waters, catastrophic. Going all the way up the side of the Appal Appalachian Mountains. Going all the way up the side of the Rocky Mountains on the other side. That's what puts out the fire from the Boise Barriers breaking out west. Okay, so when you stand with the prophets, you see they see over here, they can't see anything in here. God hid it from them. So, my view, and that's what you're going to get when you write me. I just call them like I see them. Uh, when when Galen wrote me on the uh, the blood on the on the uh, mercy seat underneath, I just call him like I see him. That's what I always try to do. Try to, and, and in, somewhere in the middle as a neutral judge, just call him like I see him. That's what I try to do for everybody. Then this is a real scary story. Nurse claims ninety thousand infected, one hundred forty four thousand. Five G. AJ writes me this question. Okay. May 17th, looks like it's going to be the crossing date for this cycle. I'm going to continue to watch for all the signs. If this contagion turns out to be what I'm afraid it is, it looks like 2020 is going to be the crossing date. But that only means the rapture is coming sooner. And you know what? I'm tired. I'm really, really tired. So, if it comes now, great. If it comes later, great. I'm going to be ready either way. I'm going to keep my work. Keep informing you guys on the Black Star and on the truth of God's word. If you have questions about what happened on 9-11, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. But I'm happy to, to uh, write you on that topic too. It only helps you to identify your enemy though. It's not because we're going to, you, you, don't, you don't think that Bush and uh, Rumsfeld, Cheney, all those, you don't think they're going to go to prison, do you? No. Not Hillary Clinton and all her emails, she's not going to prison either. Bad guys are in the devil's world. Well, they're kings here. It's whenever we go on the other side that we're the kings and they are the ones uh, suffering in the lake of fire. So it's almost impossible to keep up with the, how fast this Wuhan coronavirus is spreading. They Over in China, whenever the information started coming out just last week, and it was already here in the United States, I could tell that the original person, the original person that they're looking for is the ground zero person. The person that interacted with the bat and the whatever it was. There's an original person. That's the one that they need to find. Because at some point, according to this nurse, this thing is already mutated. Now, if you go to, to Outbreak, the one with, uh, with Dustin Hoffman in it. Dustin Hoffman. Watch that movie. And then you're going to see that there's a monkey that's involved. And, the, and they had to find that monkey in order to understand the mutation because the thing mutates and then that changes it so i'm um, getting emails about that well you can use oregano you can use this there's nothing that you're going to be able to use against this whenever this thing mutates um, maybe nano silver or something like that mms something like that maybe but the, your regular th your regular remedies are not going to work on this thing the reason is because it's not natural it's not, this is not a natural made bug. It's like the H1N1. H, H, H1N1, N3, N2, H5N1. I believe it was a triple, triple recombinant back in 2009 and 10. And we lucked out that they weren't doing, this could be the bug they're going to do the population coal with. And if it is, the only way that you're going to, to neutralize this threat is to get out of the way. It's the only way you're going to do it. And this thing is spreading right now. People don't know. This bug is terrible because it has a two-week gestation. If it killed people in three days, you wouldn't have the spread. If people had symptoms in two days, you wouldn't have the spread. You've got a bug here that people carry for two weeks and they do not even have a symptom. And they're carrying it and they're spreading it to other people who do. So they're going to be missing links in the chain. This cat is already out of the bag. It's already out of the bag. It's already global right now. They don't realize how bad this is. And whenever this thing mutates, and that's the problem with having so many 
illegal aliens running around in your country. If you monitor your borders and you don't have any illegal aliens, you have hospitals, then you have strong immune systems and you can you have a much better opportunity to fight. But when you're allowing millions and millions of third world people, illegals, to just run around, and where do you think that they wind up? They wind up in the hospitals because they got to have their free health care and that you're paying for. And this thing is spread airborne. It's going through the ventilation systems throughout the whole hospital. Right? You don't know what to believe how long that this thing can live in the air before and with the opportunity to pass to other people. But what I do know, I've done enough research on it right now to know that this thing is only 70 to 100 nanometers. Whenever they tell you the size of the bug, they're giving you the length of it. There's a length and there's a width. The width of this guy is even smaller than 70 nanometers. The masks that these people are wearing, this is not even a N95 rated mask that's going to filter out 95% of 0.3 micron part, uh, particulates. The width of this bug is one quarter the size of that this, this mask will protect against. And these, if it has an N rating, N95, in 90 and 95 it's only getting 95 to percent of the larger size particulates that are 3, 0.3 microns which is 300 nanometers this bug is less than 100 nanometers in width it's a quarter of the size you'd have to have a hazmat suit you'd have to have your own air supply to be able to hide from this bug if it's in the room with you this thing can latch on to the moisture in your eyeballs you don't even have to believe it breathe it but the mask that this lady's wearing it may she may as well not even be wearing a mask because that bug is just going to pass right through it it's like trying to um you know the type of net that you catch a bass with you know the big old holes in it it's like trying to catch minnows you cannot do it it's impossible you keep swiping at the middle swiping in the middle you're never going to catch one that mask is never going to catch these bugs this is a very scary scenario And this, this, this newsletter could be just full of this type of information. The Project Black Star newsletter is too. They're saying 5 million Chinese. These guys are too late. It's too late. This is what they needed to be doing a month ago. It's already too late. When this thing hits a population, a third world po population, it is going to mutate into a super strain. And since the United States allows... Thank you, thank you, uh, Miss Pelosi. Thank you, Democrats, for all the illegals that are running around. You, you have people with weakened immune systems walking around inside this country right now. Whenever they get sick, then they're going to take it home and they're going to infect their illegal kids. And their illegal kids go to your schools. They're going to wind up in your hospitals. You're not going to be able to escape this if you're in a large city. If you're in a large city, you're not going to be able to escape this. The chances, and then the chances are going to continue to go up for you. The smaller the city you're living in, to get to the small town, if you're out there on Rebecca's property, you build your house there, and you live, you work at home, right? Then you have the highest chance of avoiding this type of catastrophe. If you have the resources, that's what I recommend that you do. But then you are treating every single person as if they're infected. With they can say, "Well, I don't have any symptoms." You don't care if they don't have symptoms. The only the only way to 100% guarantee is that you do not have contact with anybody. I know how it sounds, but a false sense of security is not what you need here. The idea that you're going to use oregano or even nano silver or anything, well, you hope that works, but there is no way to neutralize that threat. We don't know enough about it yet. We don't know how it's going to mutate yet. So, that type of threat, you get out of the way. That's the only way. And remember what I said. I got into the survival program not because of the Black Star. Because of the H1N1 triple triple recombinant biological weapon. That's what got me to be a survivalist. And this is scaring me. This is really scary stuff. If you work in a place in a city where you are interacting with people, taking money from them, you're, then you are... You're, if, you, if you work in a hospital... If this turns out to be the super strain mutation, 
you're carrying it for two weeks before you even know you have it. The people that are going to fall first are the people, the healthcare workers that are on the front line. Like the one that I was show, uh, did a video on. She had, she had a uh, N95 rated mask on. She's saying, please send us more masks. You don't even have a mask on. This bug's going to go right through that like it's not even there. You have a false sense of security. You get closer to the bug. You think you're safe, but you're not. If she had on the right type of equipment, it would be enclosed to fight this bug. It's way too small. You have to realize that even viruses get viruses. Oh, uh, cruelty to animals gets more uh, media coverage than beheaded Christians. This beheaded, this is not the uh, Great Tribulation that's happening. This is the soul period, the blood part, the persecution against Christians today that mirrors what happens at the end of the age when the devil and his beast son is killing everybody obeying the gospel of the kingdom. They're going to kill the, to, down to the last one. They're going to kill them before the end comes. Okay, but this is not the end of the age. This is the soul part, the blood part. These Christians are representative of people that live at the end of the age, near the end of the day of the Lord. So if there's a spirit part, soul part, and there's a body part that's literal. This is not the literal part that's going to happen at the end of the age. This is the soul part that we're seeing. Important. So there are parallels. You can use prophecy to root out what's happening in the soul part, but you have to understand the three witnesses. You have to be mature and be able to see to connect those dots. The year of the Bible underway as, as ministries look to spark Bible revival in 2020. New American Standard, the New King James Version, those are the two that I rec recommend, and read from the Pauline Epistles every single day. Build up the new nature that's in you. That's the food that you need to keep your new self, your new inner man strong. You're going to see these things easier if your new inner man is, and if you read my book, it's going to say right there, it's the new inner man that teaches you. All I have is seeds. That's all I have. The new inner man, okay, we're going to water, we're going to seed, we're going to water. The new inner man is going to show you all these things. Morphing into Orwellian states. Well, I'm not very proud of the way the United States is going right now. And uh, what the left is doing, and what, whenever you see the media, media, what's that word? The root word, Latin, middle. They're supposed to stand in the middle of the, what's the news that's happening and give you the story. They're not supposed to take sides, Republican or Democrat. They're not the media anymore. Instead of what they become is activists for one side or the other. And I do not want conservative activists, and I do not want liberal activists either. Standing in the middle, in the media. The media should be in the middle. They're like a judge. Neutral corner. Like these administrators and moderators on the Bible sites. Don't take a side. That's your doom when you take a side. And it's still, CNN irks me. been tweeting over there some when I get time. Because of how they are. They're fighting for this witnesses thing. Witnesses, witnesses. More documents, witnesses. Schumer is still so laughable. Because they don't have a case. And the, the short answer on all of that is that the House of Representatives is the prosecutor. The Senate is the jury. The, the, uh, the other party is the president's representatives, who is the defense. you got the prosecution and the defense. The jury is not supposed to call witnesses. Whatever jury did you ever hear of that listened to the, to the prosecution... They listen to the defense, and then the jury stands up and says, oh, wait a minute, we want to go call more witnesses. No, that's not your job. Your job is to just side the case, particularly on the two articles, the lamest articles that have ever been presented. You're supposed to decide on the two articles, and the evidence comes from the House. Their job is to investigate. Your job is to be a juror. Now, they're trying to, if they change this, if they, uh, if the, if the moderate Republicans force McConnell, into that type of a situation, a uh, witness for witness thing, it's going to change this country. You cannot do that. It's not been done before. They had some people talking. They had some tapes and things on. But the jury is supposed to be the jury and decide. My view that the uh, CNN is using opinion molding propaganda to mold opinion for the against the president. 
that they've been attacking for the last three years, along with Pelosi and them, and they're trying to bait the GOP senators into going through a process that will go, take us until April, June, or July, or August, because they want to muddy up the president. That's a, This is never about removing the president. They know they don't have the votes for that. Never going to happen. But they're trying to influence the 2020 election, which is exactly what they're accusing Trump of. What they're accusing Trump of is what they're guilty of. And that irks, that just irks me. And pulling the wool over people's eyes and using the media that's supposed to be in the middle to run propaganda. And they've been engaged in this for the last three years. And like I say, I didn't vote for Trump, but you know what? I'm admiring his work. And he is looking more and more like a good guy, even though he allows illegals to run around everywhere. We're never going to have a perfect president. So I'm, I, at first I was looking at his down, you know, the downside of him with so many illegals running around, he's not doing anything about it. Building a wall, yeah, but what about the millions and millions and millions and millions and millions that are already here? He's not nearly aggressive enough for me. But he's never going to get a perfect president. He has to, he's working with a broken system. So um, I'm, I'm, Trump is growing on me more and more as I'm watching the haters. The haters are making me like him more. Christianity Today doubles down on condemnation of Trump defenders. That's you and me. I'm, I'm becoming more and more of a Trump defender. I mean, I, I, I uh, subscribed or whatever to uh, Trump's, the real Donald Trump Twitter, just so I could tell him that I don't like about the way he lets the illegals running around. No kidding. Um, just recently, I did that. Um, Denver school board votes to require gender-neutral bathrooms. Our country, people in our country have far too much time on their hands. Evangelists love Trump for many reasons, but one of them is especially terrifying. End times. This is not the end times. The day of the Lord's only starting. Boom. Um, the, the Trump has Iran so scared now. The number. I'm just imagining the number two general. I don't think he's come out of his house or out of his bunker since the number one guy got killed. The scientist who simulated the global impact of the of a coronavirus outbreak says the cat's already out of the bag. The cat is already out of the bag on that. I studied this for years. And I can tell you for a fact it's already out of the bag. Now we just have to see if we get lucky or not, just like last time with the H1N1. But if you look, you didn't see no 5 million people getting quarantined in China whenever the pig flu came. You didn't see a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now. So it's almost... Whenever I get a feel, 2009 and 10, and now what's happening, then the media and China appear to be playing this like a vehicle that's about to lose control. It's like it's they're slipping gears. They should have been in a different gear a month ago, and they have it in a low gear. Then they want to put it in a high gear. It's like they're switching gears. That's the way it feels by, by you know, the sensing, the keywording of the headlines that are coming out from this story then this appears like it's going to be something. This is going to be the biggest story of the year. Like people dying, it could be hundreds of millions of people that die from this. I'm not trying to be a scaremonger or anything. Just trying to say, like in the movies, this could become real life like a movie. It could end up like the road with a man walking and his kid walking down the road. Those are the kinds of things that you join survival groups for. And this right here is just another threat, like the buoyancy barriers that are going to break, like the earth is going to be tipped over by the geological pole shift. This is another one right here that's telling you that you better get ready to get out of the way. You better start looking at these threats and looking at ways to neutralize these threats. They're going to be coming down the road. So that's all the time that I have to be to share with you guys. A lot more covered in this newsletter. I'd like for you to get your hands on it. You get a copy of the... I think it's newsletter number three now. I changed it from the last time. I feel like I'm running a little bit low on RAM. Mystery Report 2, is that the one? Oh yeah, both of them. Black Star, number two for 2020, and number two for... I'll update this in the, I don't know, it'll be like number seven or eight. I like to do about once a month for uh, those that want to download a newsletter for free. Keep more information right here at the website. Appreciate your support very, very much. And um, I'll see you on the, um, eventually, um, just between me and you guys, because not very many of you that are watching me right now, then um, I'm, going, I'm doing a project. We ripped all the carpet. 
out of this trailer. It's a pretty big trailer. It's 30 feet. It's a bump out. I don't know, 16 foot. It's a big place. It's like an apartment, kind of. And um, the because of this bug that we've had, this thing has been trying to kill us for the last six weeks, then um, the first question that David asked me in the Bible study was, do you have carpet? And then uh, my significant other, Kelly, she was saying, maybe we need, you know, so we, while we were treated, we tore all the carpet out, went down and got flooring. And I've been, now I've got this room, this bump out done that I'm looking at right now. I've got to do the other room that's in there as time permits as my, and as my energy per, allows me to do. So we've got the materials now. Appreciate you guys that are helping me and the support coming in. Really, really helping a lot. And I'm in, eternally grateful to you. Um, for those that are helping me and um so once we are resettled again and we're not having to empty the trailer and spray it every week and all this work's done and we have clothes on our back again that we're not worried it's going to be reinfect us and stuff then um that might be another reason because of what i've been going through since before long before but december is uh that's so why I'm reacting to the way the, the the coronavirus, too, because what we've been going through has been pestilence, and I'm seeing this pestilence and seeing the fear in the in the eyes of the people that are sharing information about it, and so anyway, I pre didn't want to leave without giving you a little update on what's going on here, and we're going to be into February, well into February before I get all this work done and everything, but in time I am going to get caught up, and my health is going to return. I'm not going to be tired all the time. And I'm going to want to spend more time making feature videos on this channel right here for things that are, maybe I'm, I just don't have time. You know, to skip, I'm skipping over some things The um, that I would really like to make videos about and things. This channel is, I've got big plans for this channel until the Black Star gets here to help more people see the light. The three witnesses of God's, um, of spirit, water, and blood that help us to see God's wisdom. It's hidden right in front of us. And um, I believe God's using this opportunity just before the Black Star comes to help his sons that are right here right now to achieve better heavenly rewards. I really believe that's what it's about. So I'm going to keep my focus on it. Please share this video with other, uh, with other people. Now, it's kind of long, packed with information to help people get away from the dominationism and see the three witnesses in scripture once you see those three witnesses in scripture then the um the thing i wanted to tell dr laura was that the testifying is going on all the time and then once you you've read the bible enough times you read my book the witnesses begin testif testifying from your heart and you begin to hear the angel song that's coming through and you realize all these witnesses are testifying at the same time. And that's we are using our filters to hear the testimony of Moses, the testimony of the earth, the testimony of God who was. All the water witnesses, Eve, all of them together are telling a story. All the blood witnesses are telling a story. All the spirit witnesses are telling a story too. The families in the rows are telling stories like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit about the Word. And all the blood witnesses and spirit witnesses and water witness combined are telling stories too for the original singularities like the word like the earth from genesis 1 1. thank you guys very much again and i'll see you on the next um update report that uh, maybe will be one through the week if not i'll see you on the uh next tuesday and i hope to call out your name as a new supporter and you still have the opportunity to if you uh, subscribe right now to join us in chat tonight where we'll be going over some of these things answering the questions from from supporting members. So thanks again, and uh, th thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the next um, Mr. Report.